one of the things that is really exciting for people, I think, as we've gone through the process of acquiring this collection, has been the first time that they walked into Mr Kennedy's house and saw all of this material together. And only in seeing it all together did people realise the extent and nature and excitement that comes with a collection of this kind. There's not another collection like it that's been in private hands for the sheer breadth of what's represented in this collection. And you can think of many, perhaps all aspects of Australia's past and find something in this great collection that will represent um, those moments. This collection, and a lot of it, um, all has an Australian theme of some kind. It, while it may have been made by Royal Dalton in the UK, it's got Waratah flowers on it, or while it might have been a piece of furniture that was made in the UK, it it's, was made out of wood that was transported from, transported from Australia, like the she oak. Back in the 1800s, Australia per capita was the richest country on, on earth. Um, and so we were the target for a great deal of of, of, of rare and precious objects of one sort or another. The significance of this particular acquisition really can't be overstated for the National Historical Collection. It is quite transformative. Every single one of these objects provides us with avenues to explore stories of Australia that we will never be able to do with any collection like it. Trevor's the other great story of this collection and how over decades he built this extraordinary assembly of our nation's history. And when you can see Trevor in the collection and understand the breadth of his interests, you're struck by the, the mind of the collector. When I was a kid, back in the days when I was a child, um, we used to collect stamps or matchbox covers or something or other, and it was a great Great pleasure in those days to the extent that there used to be a junk shop on every corner, um, uh, you know, antique shops have now all been taken over by the internet and the eBays of the world, etc., etc. But hunting around antique shops um, was always, you know, great, a lot of fun. Because the world has changed so much, of course, they're not making these things anymore. Um, you know, it's all manufactured in China and uh, elsewhere and that Swedish group that you just sort of stick it together. So a lot of it's been lost. It's, it's becoming and has become quite valuable in so many areas. There is no collection that has this particular collection's breadth and diversity, not just in terms of the range of dates that it covers, but in terms of the material culture that it represents. It is unlike anything that people have seen before. In that sense, this is a great collection because of its breadth, because of its diversity, of those things that emerge out of um, popular culture traditions that then become very high value over time and highly collectible, right through to great works of art that tell us the story of this nation, that are pieces of our history that are, um, cannot be reproduced. It's been a remarkable process bringing this collection to Canberra and the process in one sense has only just begun. We will spend years now documenting and researching these items and creating an even richer story that Australians will be able to enjoy. I can't tell you how, how grateful I am to the, to the Museum of Australia for taking on this collection because it was always my my great fear that it would be dispersed to the four winds. There are still quite a few very serious collections in private hands, um, but this is the best of them.